Thank you for joining me again today. Today we want to continue our series on the last days. I really enjoy talking about current events in the light of Bible prophecy. And what's exciting is that as we look at the Bible, not only do the events taking place in the world around us confirm the truth of the Bible, but it also confirms the idea that we're living in the very last days before Jesus comes back for those that are believers. Last week we looked at several passages, including some in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, it says this, or chapter 3, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. The Bible says in the last days there's going to be perilous times. We're watching those take place. I think we're living in that very time. And then in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4, we have Paul writing to his friend Timothy, and he's stating this thing. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. So if you look at this perilous times, seducing spirits, doctrines of demons, he said that's how you're going to know the last days. Deception, fear, and control. Remember, we started looking at, at those aspects last week. And we want to continue that this week. And what we want to look at particularly this week is really, I'm going to say, three countries or three regions that the Bible speaks of or doesn't speak of that show that we're living in the last days. I think you'll enjoy what the Bible says. And you're going to be shocked at how up-to-date the Bible is. Some of the passages we're going to look at today are 2,800 years old. And it looks like today's headlines. Let's begin with Russia. Now, the Bible speaks about Russia a variety of times. And I know for years I've talked to people in prophecy conferences about the, the wonderful passage in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. And it says, in the land of Magog, the chief prince are the Rosh of Meshach and Tubal. And it's interesting because as you study those ideas, the idea of the chief prince, which is Rosh, or that's how you'd say Rasha, there's an ah uh added on it. It's exactly talking about the country of Russia. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible said 2,800 years ago through the prophet Ezekiel that in the last times, it uses that word, in the latter days, in the last times, that Rosh would come with certain neighbors against Israel to take a spoil, to take a bounty. And so the countries that it identifies are Russia, Iran, or it's called Persia, Libya, Ethiopia, Turkey, and Tagarma is what it's called, or Germany. And you see how the Israel is located right in the middle of these. And the Bible makes it clear that in the last days, we're going to find these countries all coming against Israel to take a spoil. And we've enjoyed studying that in time past. At least I've sure enjoyed studying it in time past. But can we go today and look at Russia? Well, I remember several years ago when Russia fell from its power, when the Iron Curtain crashed, and, and everyone was saying, you think Russia will ever be a power again? My answer is yes. My answer was yes, because the Bible says in the last days it will become a power. And we've watched in the last 20 or 30 years Russia come back in its strength. We watched Mr. Putin come into power. And just this fall, it was incredible because we saw Russia make an alliance with Turkey and with Iran. Both are countries that the Bible says in the last days will come against Israel. And their alliance was together to come against Israel. What I think is really important for us to realize is that today on the border of Israel, right on their, on their eastern border, on the Golan Heights in the area of Syria, we have Russian tanks ready to invade Israel at the drop of a hat. Russia is aggressive. And so, is that confirmed in other things making the news? Well, let's look at this headline. The New York Times, January the 13th, 2022. Russia, at an impasse with the West, warns it is ready to abandon diplomacy. The Ukraine says that they can identify 106,000 Russian troops on the border, ready to invade. They've counted 1,500 tanks near its border. Let me tell you this, an army of that size, you don't immobilize those and bring those to a border without something in mind. You see, here's the point. The point is this, Russia is showing aggression by attacking other nations, just as the Bible said they would in the last days. And so here's the Russian bear. And the Russian bear, it's ready to gobble up Ukraine. And you want to know something? There's no one in the world really to, to stop it in terms of power. The power of the United States has melted away. The United Nations is afraid to take a stand against them. 
knowing the weakness of the United States, Russia now is acting in full force. And as we watch the Russian bear aggressively going after its neighbors, will Ukraine be next? Could be. And after that, will Israel be the next victim as outlined in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39? The very fact that the Bible says that Russia would come to power again, the very fact that, that God would name them by name and name their, their uh, common cohorts by name, all of them involved in this aggression, shows to me how update the Bible is. This is exactly what the Bible said. We're watching the Bible take place before your very eyes. The prophet Ezekiel, if he were here, he'd say, wow, that's what I wrote about. That's what I warned about. And we're watching it take place. You know something? I don't think that real battle of Russia coming into Israel, it may not take place until the tribulation. The church may be gone, but they're ready to take that step even today. Do you see how close we are to the coming of Jesus Christ? Well, here's a, another nation that I think is important because the Bible has much to say. The Bible talks about how that Israel will have a prominent place in the last days. It would come back as a nation. We watched that take place in 1948. It would have its capital of Israel. We watched that take place in the last few years. We've watched Israel talk about the importance of, of Israel or Jerusalem as its capital. We've looked at the Temple Mount and how important it is to not just Judaism, but as well to, to Islam and where we think the recurrent Christ will show the evidence of Christ's footprints very soon. But the Bible indicates this, that the whole world would be against Israel. There's a series of passages that I think are important, and we may not look at all of them, but I want to mention them because these are so important. And as you study, if you enjoy studying these types of subjects, you'll really enjoy the study. But the book of Joel, chapter 3, here's what the Bible says. I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will judge them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and that they part of my land. And God talks about when all the nations come that God will judge them because they're getting ready to judge Israel. They're not judging Israel because Israel's done something wrong. They're judging Israel because they dislike the Jewish people. They dislike the God of the Jews. And it doesn't stop there. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12 and chapter 14. Again, we find incredible passages concerning these things. Listen as I read to you in, in Zechariah chapter 12. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all peoples round about. And when they shall be in the siege both against Judea and against Jerusalem, in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the nations of the earth be gathered together against it. Very clear that the world's going to decide against Israel. And again, Zechariah chapter 14, listen, it says this. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished. Half of the city shall go forth into captivity. The residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Wow. God is not going to be surprised by this, and we shouldn't be surprised. Revelation chapter 16. It talks about how that, that God will gather all the nations together against Israel, and in that valley, it will be like a wine press. He will put his, his foot down, and it says that, that like a wine press, when you put your foot down, the, the grapes and the juice of the grapes, it squirts in every direction it flows. And so the valley will be full of blood up to the bridle of horses. This is a prediction made by the Bible. Some of these are 2,000 years old. Some of these are 2,800 years old, but we're watching it take place. You see, this is why it's an exciting time to live. I know there's many discouraging things as you look around, but there's some encouraging things. And the encouraging thing is this, God's word is still true. And what the Bible predicted is taking place even today as we're making our study. Now here's another one that I think you'll find interesting because we've watched this this fall particularly. The squad, these are a number of, of US elected senators and they're anti-Semitics in terms of carrying the day against the House Democrats yet again. And so what they said was, we want to defund the U.S. funding of Israel's Iron Dome. Now, the Iron Dome is a, a defensive system. What it does, it blocks or it alerts when the missiles come out of Gaza or any other place into Israel. 
And they're so mad about that that they, they voted and they encouraged the House Democrats to zero out the funding for it. Let me tell you, it saved thousands of lives, not just of Israelis, but also Arab Israelis. It's been a great protection for other people, including the United States. But you see, these people, they hate the Jews and they hate the God of the Jews. And so we watched their hatred spew out as they continue to do anything to defund Israel. Let me tell you this, that Israel has been a great ally. Much of what we do in terms of, of security in the world, we have Israel's help. They partner with us in so many things. But the hatred doesn't stop there. Notice this, Cortez has a staff member, Hussein Altamini. He calls Israel a racist European ethnostate that was built on stolen land. This was January the 1st, 2022. Let me tell you, God said that the land was his. He allowed Israel to have it. It's interesting that Israel is perfectly willing for, for the Palestinians to live there. But why then is it not possible for them to coexist? Because statements like this, and so here's a senator who hates Israel. Her staff member makes these statements. Can you imagine if any one of us made a statement like that about, let's say, American Indians or about Spanish people? Uh, any nation in the world, they would be, they would be entirely uh, demonized by the press. But now he can make this hideous statement, and he's looked at as a hero. You see, there's such a double standard. But the Bible said in the last days, you know, because Israel would be hated. We've seen Russia come to power and be aggressive, exactly what the Bible says. We've seen Israel hated and become victimized, exactly what the Bible says. And it doesn't stop with just that. Again, I want to show you a very interesting set of results from the United Nations General Assembly. It completed its tally of 2021 resolutions. Altogether, there are 19 of these. And so North Korea got reprimanded one time. Crimea, one time. Myanmar, one time. Syria one time, Iran one time. All of those got their vote and they deserved it. But notice this, Israel 14 times. In other words, Israel, the 14 times in 2021, five times more than the rest of the world combined. Do you see the hatred that's there? This is what the Bible said. I can go into almost every European country, look at their newspaper, and I can find a sign that talks about the Jews must die, the Jews must be eliminated. Why do we put up with that? For any country, let alone Israel, because God said that Israel was the apple of his eye, and he would protect them, and he would protect those who protect them. I'm worried because I see things changing. So the Bible talks about Russia. It's taking place today. Exactly what the Bible said would be in the last days. The Bible talks about Israel and the attitude the world would have toward Israel. That's taking place today as we talk. There's another question that I get frequently, and that's this. What about America in the last days? Let me tell you this. One of the great mysteries, uh, I think, of Bible prophecy is where is the United States mentioned in the end times? And here's what I find that's of interest. You see, in the past, the United States stood with Israel, and God blessed us for that. In the past, we had Bible-based laws, and those laws were enforced, and God blessed that. In the past, we had moral values. Our values, our morals, our ethics, they were all based on the Bible, and God blessed us. Look at the blessing that is given to an America. But now I'm concerned because in the past where that blessing was known by God and felt by all of us and enjoyed by all of us, what about now? Well, we're turning against Israel. We're defunding Israel. We're criticizing Israel for just being Israel. Why? What have they done? All they've done is help us. They've done nothing against us. Next, we're watching now prayer and the Bible removed from schools and from daily life. My friend, when that occurs, the Bible says that God will judge us. Remember we read the passage in, in 1 Chronicles that when Israel turned their back on God, there came a time when, when God says there, there's no more chance to, to come back to God. And so God had to judge them because they had left the plan of God and the pattern of God and the blessings of God. I'm afraid America is heading in the same direction. 
you see in the past we had values that were based on, on morality, but now open immorality, open homosexuality, we're, we almost approve it. It's almost in every commercial. It's almost in every program. Why, why have we turned our back on the values that God has established as being good for us and true to his word? We've turned our back on God in so many ways. It's like we're walking away from him and we think that there'll be no repercussions. Even in the church, the church is lukewarm at best. Sometimes our churches are more social than they are even biblical. We're afraid to take a, a stand where the Bible does, whether it's on the issues of, of men and women, whether it's on the issues of homosexuality, immorality, on decency. All these things, God will judge us because his word is clear what his pattern is, what his plan is, and why and how he will bless. I look at the violence that's taking place a part of daily life. You know what? It's a shame for the violence that's taking place in our large cities. The crime, the corruption that's going on. No wonder, no wonder we're looking at perilous times. No wonder we're looking at doctrines of demons and seducing spirits. These things are haunting our country because we've turned our back on God. What are some of these problems? Well, let me tell you that they begin in a very unusual way. Let's talk just about money. You know what? I believe that in the end time, the Bible indicates in Revelation 13, that the Antichrist will be able to use control of money, jobs, and purchasing. Revelation 18 and 19, we've already looked at how that, that wealth will disappear in, in a single hour, the collapse globally. And so there's a cash crazy idea. A fifth of all the US dollars were created in the year 2020 alone. Think about that. What's the value then of a dollar? You see, we're printing money at a record rate. The Fed ordered more notes and said it, it might increase. And if that occurs, you know what? Inflation will even go worse than it is right now. Everyone's talking about inflation. Everyone's talking about how the dollar buys nothing. No wonder. Can you imagine that? A fifth of all the, the dollars were created in 2022. Here's a, a great illustration that someone passed on to me this week. I think it will help bring about the idea of, of the size of these numbers. If you spent $1 million every day since the day Christ was born, it would still take 700 more years to spend $1 trillion. Now multiply that $1 trillion by 30 to get America's national debt of almost 30 trillion dollars. You see what I'm saying? The Bible says that in the end times that wealth, health, fear, control, deception will all come into play. And we're watching that take place. You see, I believe that as the dollar fails, and it will, because we've turned our back on God, as the dollar fails, it will only make it simpler for the Antichrist to take over. It will only make it much simpler for the new world order to say, let's have a reset. Let's issue new money. Let's, let's make the control of the money under our jurisdiction instead of the way it's set up now in, in all the countries independently. What's taking place around us is exactly what the Bible said would be in the last days. But there's additional paradoxes in all of this in terms of problems. The confusion. I think it's part of the fear factor. You see, there's a great way for someone to gain control and to gain power, and that is to, to put you in fear. And so just look at this confusion. Here's the U.S. Open, and, and then it's packed arena, almost no mask. Here's a college football game, and if you look at this huge stadium, 100,000 people or so, almost no mask. But then you come and put your child in a classroom, and we have the desk spaced way apart, and we have them wearing masks. D do you see the confusion? Oh, it doesn't stop with our children. It's interesting, you go to an airport and, and they make sure that when you line up to check your bags in your, your station six to eight feet apart, and then they put you on a plane and you're packed shoulder to shoulder, you, you barely fit in the seat. The confusion, I call it the, the COVID confusion. You see, we don't know what's true and what's a lie. We don't know what's for political favor and what's for political gain. I know this, that the people that are marketing COVID are making lots of money. Yeah, they're, they're getting rich at the expense of the health and the freedom of people in America. Now, you say, well, you're, you're doing such a political thing. No, I'm just saying the confusion. Why? Because our course has been turned against God. And as a result of that, there will be confusion. There will be fear. When we stood with God, 
when we stood with God in terms of having the word, the, the authority by which we live and meet and have our country based on, God blessed our country and now there's no blessing because we turned our back on God. I found it ironic because this past week, here is a poster that was put up concerning New York City. New York City, beginning on January the 15th, said this, starting Saturday, you need three things before you head out. You need proof of vaccine if you're 12 years old or, or older. You need proof of vaccine and a photo ID if you're 18 years or older. And you need a mask. Now this is to go out on the streets of New York, whether you're just walking around or whether you're going to a restaurant. But within a month, New York City voted to allow 800,000 non-citizens to vote in local elections. Now here's what's incredible about that. The people that could vote in local elections, they needed no ID, they needed no mask, they needed no COVID shot, and they needed no citizenship. D does anyone else see that, that this is almost a direct violation of each other? We allow non-citizens to vote that have no mask, no ID, no COVID shot, and here to walk around the city, you gotta have a mask, you gotta have a COVID shot, you gotta have a photo ID. There, there's something wrong. It doesn't add up, does it? Confusion. Total confusion. I think the reason that I'm mentioning this is because where's the United States? Let me tell you where I think it is. I think the United States is crumbling, it's falling. I think when we turned our back on God, then God has every reason to say, you know what, if you turn your back on me, then I'm gonna turn my protection back on you and you'll be on your own. You see, America has been blessed because we were faithful to God's word. We carried the gospel and missions work around the world. But now as we've drawn back from God, well, God says, why should I not draw back from you? First Chronicles, it mentions it exactly. It said they turned their back until there was no more remedy. You see, I believe there's no United States mentioned in Bible prophecy because I think the United States is gonna fall and crumble and it may dissolve totally as a country. And if it doesn't fall before the Lord comes back, can you imagine after the Lord comes back and he takes Christians home, there'll be no fiber left, no moral fiber left in this country for God to bless. And I think America may not be a significant factor when all these nations come against Israel and when God comes back to judge the earth for right and wrong. I'm concerned for America. My concern doesn't stop there. You know what, we're, we're looking at tax bills and we're looking at all kinds of uh, bills spending trillions of dollars. And as you look at the details of those, some of these are pretty scary. Matter of fact, one of them has to do with a tax credit to pay the salaries of local journalists and it's back on, on budget bill that's before the, the Congress. And I want you to, to listen to this video and see if we shouldn't be concerned about what we're hearing. Some people ask me, who are the folks that actually like this bill? Well, there's quite a few folks that like this bill. The folks that are in wealthy Democrat-run states, they love this bill because the wealthiest individuals in the highest tax states, and those are the blue states, the wealthiest individuals in the highest tax states, they get a huge tax break in this bill. For the wealthiest individuals, they get an $80,000 a year cut in their taxes, what they call state and local taxes. So if you're in New York or New Jersey or Illinois or in California, and you're in the top 1%, you get an $80,000 cut in your taxes. They like this bill. Somebody else that likes this bill are the wealthy that actually buy electric vehicles. Incredibly expensive, beautiful vehicles, many of them. But they get $12,500 off of their vehicle based on this bill. The uh, environmental activists love this bill because billions of dollars actually go directly to these environmental activist groups, many of them that were very active in the Biden campaign. They get additional billions of dollars coming to them. In fact, there's billions of dollars to create a new civilian climate core, a group of young people that will travel around the country actually promoting environmentalism paid for with federal tax dollars. They like this bill. Unions like this bill because currently, if you donate to a nonprofit, you're able to take some of that off of your taxes. But under this bill, that goes away and it's replaced with if you pay union dues, you get to write that off your taxes. So unions definitely like this bill. 
And the folks that really, really like this bill, reporters and journalists. Reporters and journalists love this bill. So some of them are not talking about the content of this bill. The reason I say that, because this bill pays half the salary for reporters and journalists all over the country. This bill puts in place that half the salary of reporters and journalists in every city and every community across America will get half of their salary paid for by the federal tax dollars. Let's see, government paid reporters and journalists. What could go wrong with that? You see my concern? You see, we are looking at a time when it's hard to find the truth. Lies, deception, fear. It's controlling the mind of the people of the world, including our own country. We've lost control of our schools. We, we've lost control of the news. We've lost control of social media. We've lost our churches. We've lost our health. Control, power, fear, deception. These things are, are grabbing the population of the world by the throat. Why? Because we turned our back on God. And when we turn our back on God, God says, there's no more remedy. Listen to this verse in 2 Chronicles 36. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of God arose against his people till there was no more remedy. My friend, God gets the last vote. And that's the vote that counts is the vote that God puts in. I come to you today and, and I wish I could be more optimistic about America. But I think individual by individual, people can turn to God. Thank God that the way of salvation is still open today. Thank God there are still faithful churches and faithful families and faithful individuals. But my concern is because there might be people that are watching today, and I want to know this, have you ever accepted Christ as your personal Savior? Have you ever admitted to God that, you know what, we have turned our back on you. I've turned my back on you. I'm a sinner. I'm short of your holy standard. I admit I'm a sinner. Number two, have you acknowledged that when Jesus went to the cross, he shed his blood, he died, he rose again. He did that for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the world. And if you would admit Christ died as my substitute, that's a way for us to go back to God and then finally to personally accept for your sin. The world is on a path that's going to lead to destruction. The world is on a path that's going to show, lead to the wrath of God as God shows his wrath on them. And we're watching it take place in Russia. We're watching it take place in Israel. We're watching it take place in America. All over the world, we're perfectly set up for a new world order. We're perfectly set up for what the Bible said is the last days. My friend, I think Jesus could come at any moment. Are you ready? And even though America's walking with her back toward God, even though the world is departing from God, you as an individual could come. Would you come to him today? If you know Christ as your Savior, live for him today. Try to win others in your family, your friends to Christ. And those that don't know him today would be the perfect day to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to our lesson next week if the Lord hasn't come. Father, we come to you today and we thank you for the truth of God's word. We thank you that as events unfold fold around us. We find that the Bible is true. Again and again, we see that the Word of God is faithful and true. Father, help us to live in the light of that today. And Father, I pray for any soul that doesn't have peace with God, that today they will come and ask God for forgiveness of their sins and accept Christ as their personal Savior. We pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.